everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about whether or not it's healthy to have a crush when you're in a relationship. So now that we have your attention, welcome to another edition of Bedhead Diaries with your host, Heather David Hare. Yes. So. Here's the deal. These crushes are about like, like Sally at the office, you know, or, you know, Joe oh, at the lunch counter, Backbone. you know, those kind of... People that you actually know and are talking to. On Interacting a on a daily basis. Right. Right. So that's what this is about. So is it, we got the question from a couple different people mm -hmm. and our friend Crystal at the Ladies Coach said she's actually gotten this question from her viewers as well. So we're like, let's address this because it does come up. It's a hot topic. It's a hot topic. Is it okay to have a crush on somebody while you're in a healthy relationship? Right. Those are air quotes. So let's talk about is the relationship healthy and how do you tell if it's okay? I think number one is let's define crush. Right. Is it an appreciation of the person's beauty and attributes and attractiveness? If it's an appreciation, I don't think it's quite a crush yet. No. It hasn't, okay. it hasn't reached the level of crush, I don't think. So I'll tell you about appreciation. Like when David and I, we meet a lot of people in our work and in our life, mm -hmm. just lots and lots of people, mm -hmm. and there are many beautiful people that we know, mm -hmm. and we appreciate their beauty. And we're right. not, we don't hold it to ourselves. Like if there's right. a hot guy or a hot girl, doesn't matter who's saying it, we're like, hey, that person's really attractive. Mm -hmm. Look at that. They're so beautiful. Oh my gosh, they're gorgeous. We talk about those things openly with each other. So I think that's a healthy appreciation because I think you should acknowledge that you're human mm -hmm. and that you appreciate beauty, whether that's in art or a person. And I think mm -hmm. if you are open with communication with each other, that would be a sign of a healthy relationship. Right. I think that's okay. I don't think that's a crush. You could even say, oh, I've got a girl crush on her or something. Right. That's still not a crush. That's, I've got a girl crush on you. Yeah. It, it, that's still not a crush right. in my mind. That's an appreciation. You're right. talking about it. You're open about it. Mm -hmm. And then there comes the point where that appreciation starts to become attraction. Which, again, is still fairly healthy. I mean, this is a... It's not quite in the danger zone right. yet. It's a, it's a fairly healthy progression from an appreciation to an attraction. Um, mm, I don't know that that's particularly a healthy progression. I think it's a healthy progression if you're heading towards a relationship. What you're saying is that it's sort of a natural progression, but I think it's your first red flag. The natural evolution is from appreciation to attraction because you're seeing the person more frequently. The appreciation factor kind of leads to the next level. And this is the normal progression of the human being. Okay, all of these things lead from appreciation mm -hmm. to attraction to all of these other elements and you can't fault an individual for going through that progression. What is important and what is paramount in this is continuing to have the conversation with your partner about these things that are going on. I think the danger zone, the why this is the first red flag is if you're in a relationship and you're going from appreciation where you're openly talking to like secret attraction. The secret attraction is, that's the yeah, key. That's the if you're like, um, even if you're still talking to your partner, like, ooh, I feel kind of attracted to this person, mm -hmm. that's still healthy because you're being honest about your feelings. Right. And then you can work it out with yeah. your partner. Like, why are you feeling attracted? What's wrong with our relationship? Is it's it not something... even what's wrong? What can we? What well, can what we can we do to improve? Right. But I mean. You know what I mean? Because these are natural things that the human brain, the human body does right. chemically when there is a person they appreciate and they are attracted to. So It's a propagation of the species thing. Right. I mean, it's your primal brain that's yes. at work here. Mm -hmm. um, what really kind of gets people in a spin and in confusion is their primal brain is acting on a trajectory towards procreation, mm -hmm. but they're evolved brain or their rational brain is going oh maybe it's meant to be because i'm attracted to this person no you're mm -hmm. just getting a hard on for this person because you're going to make babies and populate the planet so let's be real about this crush thing so really if you're keeping this little secret if the you secret, secret attraction, attraction then and you start dwelling on the person, focusing on the person, putting a tr putting attention to that person. This is where it starts. Th well, this is uh, beyond the start. This is going into definitely into the danger red. zone where you're, you're going, red. It's like yeah, red, 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 red. Where you're creating, you're intentionally creating these neural pathways, and the rift between you and your partner starts getting bigger. 
because you're not communicating with your partner, you're not in a healthy relationship at that point because there's something lacking to the point where in your mind, this person is becoming more attractive to you than your partner. Well, because primarily you're on the trajectory to procreate with this person. So this is what's happening biologically with you. Right. Okay, it's not like fantasy, the, the universe has brought us together, it's no. meant to be, and I'm with the right, you know. Forget that, what's happening is you're creating a bond with a person to create babies right so let's look at it really rationally you're focusing you're fantasizing you're putting your attention to it and what's happening is even your subconscious is creating stories and fantasizing and scenarios mm -hmm. and happy life together and the what if because the brain is wired to protect you from pain it is protecting you from the issues and problems in your relationship by creating this separate fantasy outside of the relationship. The grass is always greener on the other side of the right. fence. So you need to stop. So what you're doing here, if you don't recognize it, is you are infatuating. Yes. You have infatuation, which is not necessarily based in reality. This is where the appreciation has gone to the attraction, which then goes to the dwelling, which becomes the infatuation. Right. This is the point where your unhealthy part has been protecting you from the issues in the relationship. So instead of addressing that, you're going out and looking for the quick fix outside of the relationship. So this does not mean that this person is your destiny or your no. fantasy or your soulmate or any of those things. Mm -hmm. You are creating that in your mind. And over time, if you do not address the points of pain inside of your own mind, inside of your own relationship, and it might not even be your relationship. It may just be some part inside of your mind that feels unfulfilled. All right, let's talk about that. So you've got two causes that could be um, pushing you towards this crush. Right. The secret crush after the appreciation and it becomes the secret. The first and the most obvious is that there might be an issue in your relationship and you just may not be compatible or you may not have the same foundations or be headed in the same direction. So then you got to, when you start to feel that crush coming on before you go feed the crush, mm -hmm. because if you feed the crush and you don't fix something that's broken, mm -hmm. if that something that's broken is within yourself, you're just going to take that broken self to the new relationship. Right. Now, the crush might end up being a great relationship mm -hmm. and be fantastic. It might be a good person. But if that thing is broken within yourself, you're just going to screw that relationship up too eventually. And that's, that's the other element is if it's an issue inside of you. If it has nothing to do with a relationship, you actually have a good or decent relationship. But you're still infatuating going on this, then you might have a pain point inside of you that needs to be addressed. Like some sort of lack of love, lack right. of unfulfilled, even in a good relationship. Right. You may have a fantastic partner, but if you can't see that fantastic partner, then you need to look and really look. Why am I having right. the crush? So before because you have gonna... the crush and feed the crush, look at yourself first. Yes. Look at yourself and look at the relationship. The second part is obviously if the relationship is abusive and the person is uh, not either not, not compatible or abusive, the whole range, then you got to look at I am having this crush outside of my relationship because there's something really wrong with the relationship itself. Right. So either way, look at the relationship, look at yourself. Right. So your desire for this other person is that there's something not fulfilled. And it might be triggering that red flag that you need to fulfill your life. Well, and I think still, you still have to look at yourself. Yes, absolutely. So for example, if you're in an abusive relationship, you've got to look at that part and see what part of you is still in that relationship. Well, you got to look at why you chose this person. What part mm -hmm. of you that was needing a work or fixing or is broken is, was in that relationship in the first place. Right. Where were the communication breakdowns? So even if it's not you, you still have to look at you mm -hmm. because you're in danger of bringing those same issues into a new relationship with someone that could be a great person. It always centers around looking at you. Yes. So the key is if you're in a relationship and you're not talking about your appreciation for another person's beauty with each or other. Or even attraction. With it in a very neutral way and keeping the communication open with your partner. Mm -hmm. With the, you know, understanding that we're human and we appreciate beauty. Right. Um, and keeping that natural and normal between you. Then you're probably going to be safe. If you find that it's creeping towards the other way, you got to stop and look at what you need to look at.
So what we want to kind of try to help you avoid is a break in reality. So when you don't address these issues and you go from the appreciation to the attraction to the dwelling to the infatuation to the destiny elements, that's where you're starting to get into the red line for the break in what's actually taking place. Right, because when you're keeping all of these emotions and things pretty much to yourself, it's it's unchecked by objective reality or right. friends that have a better, you know, outpoint perspective. Viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So just be careful. And it's not that I haven't, there are always exceptions. So when we give you these things, it's it's a blanket. It's not a blanket. It's an overall It's an um, overall general view. view. Um, because we have seen exceptions mm -hmm. where the crush, the infatuation, the relationship that developed turned into actually what the person needed. A lot of times, not a lot of times because that isn't a, isn't a norm, but when that happens and the person is looking at themselves while they're still having this crush, this infatuation that leads to something else, the key component is that they were looking at themselves and looking at the relationship. Well, and I have friends who have had that break with a partner, had a crush on someone else, and mm -hmm. they created a relationship. So I'm giving you an exception that has worked. But it takes work. It takes work. Those two people who were in that relationship worked on themselves, looked at the issues, mm -hmm. looked at why we're unhappy in our relationships and why we're moving towards each other, and they're happily married now. There are exceptions to these general overall umbrella things, but in general, this is what's happening in a crush. And you want to avoid the break in reality. Right. We're talking about when it gets into a break in reality and you've created something that's just not there. It's fantasy that is no basis in what's actually taking place. We're talking about the flushes that cause you to avoid looking at your stuff. Crushes as an escapism. Yes. Don't escape your life. So thank you for joining us. Prepare for, prepare for, prepare for the crushing chicken. Crushing chicken. It the doesn't feel chicken. like he should be Southern. It feels like that should be like Schwarzenegger. Prepare yeah. for the crushing chicken. How's your Schwarzenegger? I'm going to crush you now. I think that works. Extremely. Crush that subscribe button. Crush the like button. Crush the share with your friends. All of the friends, all of them, all of the world. Maybe it's a Russian chicken. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> And comment below what you like the most, what you want to see next. We want you to tell us what you want us to tell All you. I love that. Have a wonderful, beautiful, amazing day. And Make it your most authentic. We'll see you next week. Have a good one.